you this afternoon to you all. It's forecast to be clear tonight, so I'm going to do some variable star observing. I normally use my C11 for the moon, the planets, and deep sky observing. But for variable stars, I prefer to use my APM binoculars. So a warm welcome to the observatory. As you can see we're actually having some clear skies at the moment, a clear night. So I'm going to go do some variable star observing with my binoculars. These are a pair of APM 100mm binoculars, 45 degree eyepieces. I bought these a few years ago and now. I've used them quite extensively. I've taken them to on holiday, taken them overseas and uh, I really like the fact that you get to use both eyes 100mm, so 4 inch aperture, really reasonable nice aperture. But as you can see, I've done a few upgrades uh, to the binoculars and really enhanced their quality of use. The first thing to talk about, I guess, is the mounting. It's a Manfrotto 161 Mark IIb, which is absolutely bomb proof, easily carries the heavy binoculars, which I think are about 8 kilos, 7 or 8 kilos, and then it has an adjustable column as well. So the binoculars. If you're looking low down on the horizon or if you're looking up at the zenith, you can easily swing the binoculars up to whatever angle or height you need. And that sits on one of the APM central arm fork mounts as well, which works really well. So it's a really nice, nice mounting. You can go up and down quite happily depending on what altitude your target is. One of the poor designs of the APM binoculars is the awful dust cover so I've replaced them with my own design. I've 3D printed these hinged just out of PLA. Got little magnets in so when they close they go. So these are my dust covers now rather than the awful ones that used to fall off and break all the time. I just slide those back. Like that. What they don't do unfortunately is give very good dew protection even with the these are all the hinges there. So I've got a plastic cut away from a folder, you know, just from a plastic stationary folder. And I just clip this on. That just slips over the, the dew shields. If you can get them on. Like so. And I'll just bring them forward a little bit as well. There we go. So we've got dew protection as well. Finally, the things in the binoculars. Not always easy, particularly at 40 or 50 times power with some of the higher power eyepieces. So I've actually mounted and drilled a cheapo red dot finder that just sits in there. The old style of APM binoculars didn't have the the new style has the correct finder shoe on there, but I had to physically bolt mine in place, drill and tap some bolts, so that's physically hard hard on. And then I can take the red dot finder off if I'm going away travelling. They're going away in their case and then put that back in when I want to use it. The other great upgrade I've done, I thoroughly recommend this, is a Bino Bandit. These are, I don't know, 20 quid or something like that, so not particularly expensive. And that clips over the top, so it keeps the, keeps the dust covers on, dust caps on. And it's this neoprene eye shoe, if I turn it that way around. And that's really useful when you're looking as an object, it keeps the peripheral light out. So if you've got street lights nearby, that's very useful to help keep the keep the glare out of the corner of your eyes. The other thing I've done, which I don't think you can see, so I'm going to tilt the camera, is of course on the tripod. You've got nowhere to store pens, pencils, what have you. So I've made just a simple plywood tray. And that can then just clips over the legs. It's just a plywood board, 
two circular holes drilled on each side, same diameter as the legs. And I just put some trim around the edge to stop pencils and notes and what have you forming off. So that literally just clips in. Yeah. And in position. So I just got my notes. I've just grabbed at random Star Atlas, pencil case, pencil, whatever. These can all just go on there. And you've got somewhere to store the notes. Eye caps, dust caps rather. You can all just go wherever. So a few upgrades I've put together. Decent tripod with the raisable pier so it can go up and down depending on the altitude of the target. Equid with the head as well, the altazimuth head. My own dust covers which I can literally hinge down every night. Longer dew shield, keeps the dew off the objectives. Red dot finder, finder so I should also it. mention as well, I've upgraded the eyepieces from the original eyepiece it came with. I've got a pair of Televu 30 millimeters in there, 30 millimeter Nagpas, which are really nice. I've also got a pair of 19 millimeter Panoptics, again, really nice optics. And the other good thing about having the minor band is it just keeps that little bit of dew off as well. Keeps them that little bit warmer. So nice eyepieces, nice optics, decent mount, a few little extras like the red dot finder, the dust covers, dew shield, all just help it that observing experience go a little bit better. And as luck would have it, there's even a well nearly first quarter moon out tonight. So as I close down the video, I thought I'd just give a quick summary of how I got on in the evening once darkness had set. So this was recorded on Thursday the 18th of February, which was the evening that the Perseverance probe, uh, sorry, Perseverance rover landed on Mars. And I realised that with the from the observatory, I could still see Mars before it set behind the tree. So I, instead of using my binoculars, I used the Celestron C11 and watched Mars in real time whilst having the NASA TV up on the monitor as well. So I was watching the landing live from Mission Control in America, whilst actually looking at the Martian surface through the telescope at the same time. I then took a tea break and then came back out, packed the scope away, shut down the monitor, let my eyes get used to the dark. And then from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock made, uh, what's that, five variable star estimates as shown. One of my favorite variable stars is S Persei, because you start off at the double cluster a uh, beautiful star hop there through a really crowded Milky Way star field. Uh, and then also the other one that I really enjoy is V Canis Venedici, which is just starting to reappear now the sort of spring skies are coming back. And that's a star hop as well from the plough that you have to cross the field of view of M51 so you get to see the Whirlpool Galaxy as well. So those were the, that was the results of my observation. So Mars in real time, watching the Mars landing at the same time and the was that five variable stars as well through the binoculars so great nice of observing <laughs>